Good morning, everyone. My name is Ye Lo, and she is Su Fang Tan, the author for our research paper 1022 here at the ICAT EGVE 2020. I would like to represent the authors for the research on virtual reality series game as an assistive technology to support pediatric visual perceptual training. All work is completed here at the Tsinghua University Sinjin International Graduate School. Today, this will be the outline for our presentation. Su Fang Tan will be giving a brief introduction about the background and I will be providing why we computed this uh, design and also how we made our system design and also future works and conclude our research. Firstly, let me introduce amblyopia. Amblyopia is a medical term used in when the vision in one of the eyes is reduced because the eye and the brain are not working together properly. This condition is also sometimes called lazy eye. Amblyopia is the most common cause of visual impairment among children, affecting approximately two to three out of every hundred children. Unless it is successfully treated in early childhood, amblyopia always persists into adulthood. Past research mimics the traditional use of amblyopia treatment where back in the days um, and the gold standard role is to suppress the healthy eye and force the patient to use the lazy eye. With the virtual reality devices set up, past researchers such as Zayak use a similar approach to inhibit or suppress the display on one eye and force the patient to use the other eye. This amblyopia VR studies have shown success as an alternative method to help patients restore visual acuity and is a fun approach to do the gold standards. For, um, however, this study focuses mainly on visual acuity and does not focus directly visual perception. The MVPT4 is one of the most widely used visual perceptual assessments. It can be used for screening and research purpose by psychologists, therapists, optometrists, and others who may need to determine a person's overall ability to discern and understand visual stimuli. Varun proposed the pyramid to separate the visual system to perceptual function. Is the bottom layer is the most common function that we are research aimed to train for. In our case, we hope to extend from past research and train the unknown and untreated attention scanning, pattern cognition, visual memory, and the abstract levels of visual cognition and adaption through vision. So the motivation and the aim for our paper is to provide a pediatric-centered practical approach to amblyopic deaf perception deficits. Pediatric care is extremely cautious working with children, especially in hospital settings. Therefore, solely using virtual reality as a treatment may not always be the best way. And since the first step to a healthy eye is to improve its visual acuity, and also from Wern's pyramid, you can see that the bottom level is visual acuity. Therefore, we approach our design through the second and also through the third stages of interaction and understand deaf cues with slightly improved visual acuity. The main challenge of designing this game is to find a proper way to restore visual perception deficits, including training of deaf perception and providing monocular cues. We specifically designed a system for pediatric care to help children better understand the visual connections and interact with the world, especially for patients with an insufficient understanding of visual stimuli. Our design provides a first-person perspective to immerse players into the interactive environment or the virtual world, manipulates with the asynchronous visual between differences in the left and right eye to simulate a binocular vision. In corresponding to the MVPT4, we eliminate motor, haptic, and auditory cues that may provide unwanted hints. We rely solely on visual depth cues. Furthermore, 
Speaking to optometrists, they suggested that looking into the distance can prevent ciliary muscle spasms and reduce extraocular muscle fatigue, and this can be computed within our VR system. Bullet time effect is also something that is specific to virtual reality and to game design because it can reduce objects movement speed in three dimension space. Objects in motion often act too rapidly and can be dangerous in some situations for children to react in a real world case scenario. However, in the virtual world, they will be able to adjust and we can also control the speed of the velocity of the deaf information and allow them to learn slowly and learn on their own pace to deal with a movement process and a movement understanding of motion parallax for cognitive training to deal with the problem. So this is the major contribution of our paper where we adjusted Warren's pyramid into our own VR game pyramid and also the uh, necessary required visual abilities. We adjusted the traditional visual perception pyramid into a virtual game hierarchy with the visual abilities needed at each layer VR hierarchical pyramid follows a bottom-up process where skills at the lower layers build upon and build up into the foundations for the successive layers as abilities advance to provide alternative approach for deaf perception training. The design focus on training attention, visual scanning, pattern recognition, and visual memory with the broader hierarchy of level 2 to 6. As we mentioned before, the bottom levels are not our major focus because previous studies such as Zayek and others have shown that they've worked a lot with visual acuity. And bottom-up training through building the foundations can ultimately approach and train for the higher order of abstract perceptions of cognitive and adaptation for visual cognition. Unlike the abstract levels, attention, scanning, pattern recognition, and visual memory, the level 2 to 6 are able to be quantified and as quantitative data to explain the higher abstract levels that are unlikely to be explained uh, to be assessed and collected as data. These five levels are then broken down into the figure ground, visual closure, visual memory, spatial relationship, and visual cognitive abilities shown in the center pyramid. To start off, this is the first training stage one, or we can consider them the training game for visual discrimination, also known as hide and seek. Concerning the standard procedures from MVPT4, we design for figure ground the ability to distinguish a prospective target, in this case, the purple star, from a complex background, and visual closure is the ability to use partial evidence to identify an object as a whole. In connections with photo hunt and games like Finding Waldo, we set this stage as hide and seek for example where the player needs to seek the correct star in a simple background and the uh, alternative and the other objects are used as distractions and also unwanted cues that may affect the children's performance and this is a video example in this video the objective is to set and attend to the object of interest the purple star so in early stages, as shown in this video specifically, there are less distractions and contacts that affects the judgment. As the difficulties increase, there will be more contacts and more cues to distract the participants. The second stage is the training stage for visual memory, where a lack of sensitivity in amblyopic children leads to poor visual working memory to retain an object or feature for task. Sequential memory and visual memory impairments can lead to poor task performance because they don't have sufficient working memory abilities. The means of hypothesis testing, guess and check, reflect visual memory's ability to relocate objects in their corresponding spatial grounds and their abstract relationship. The puzzle map in our design will let the player see the object once and present the same object in another view scenario. This is the video of our puzzle map.
training stage three is the method for spatial relationship also or ultimate stage where we design to train the specific understanding for linear perspective and the ability to perceive the positions of object to understand oneself and to understand how to interact with other objects and the, and the virtual world and the real world. And interposition, perspective, relationships, and motion parallax are all important uh, aspects of spatial relationship. In the first scenario displayed here, we set different examples and practice and lead the players to understand robust yet common knowledge in a virtual scenario. We set progressive questions in the scene to ask these players and children to judge the approximate depth and distance. For example, they may ask, which tree is closer? Players and also these pediatric participants need to evaluate the distance by combining interposition depth clues with the shadow of the objects. The linear perspective, as mentioned before, is a puzzle illusion where we would like to see if they have this ability to understand the puzzle despite the puzzle illusion. Where every object presented in the real world follows visual positioning principles both in two dimension and three dimension. Linear perspective is also widely applied in uh, visual depth deficits perception training which creates an illusion systems of depth on a flat surface. In this paper, we train and design the specific understanding for linear perspective and transfer this knowledge for depth perception into advanced practice and thoughts. The system sets two different types of linear perspective seen. In the second scenario, all the trees are at the same height, but according to the linear perspective principle and also the Ponzo illusion, through a different distance, they share the same inclined line and shrinks as it follows the line. We set different views for players to position themselves into to understand from different perspectives and different point of view of how these trees are actually un unaffected but yet in each position in each retinal image that they display into and they capture they they may look different feeling a sense of visual cognition and how to able to scalable and adjust their visual image from different perspectives and this is a video of the uh, training stage three to continue we exploit the advantages and functions of a VR display to achieve scenes concerning depth and looking into the distance our proposal can be further implemented in pilot clinical studies to investigate it as an alternative quality of care rehab to fulfill children's perceptual sensitivities and abilities to interact with the world. We hope and we aim to work on increasing their depth perception sensitivity so they will be able to better interact with the objects and interact with themselves. And currently we are working with our local hospital and the ophthalmologist are working closely with our game design in order to put forward and to be evaluated in terms of its uh, quality of care and actual performance. Today I would like to thank you for the presentation. Please feel free to contact me, Su Fang Tan, or Yu Han Dong, the corresponding author, at the following emails. Thank you and have a nice day.